Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Natural Beer. Uh, it's been a while. Um, it's been a, probably a couple of weeks now since my last uh, video like this. Um, simple reason being, I didn't buy anything. Um, <laughs> I've just been uh, taking a couple of weeks off from it. Um, mostly for just for space reasons, really. But um, yeah, we saw a couple of deals and uh, suffice to say, we've kind of gone in a little bit. Um, this first bundle is going to be... A relatively sensible one, I think, in the sense of I got a bunch, I got ten games, and there's nothing too crazy, but there are a couple of interesting things in here that's worth showing off for sure. Um, and you know, pretty standard stuff, really. We did get a good deal on this bundle, but nothing too crazy. The other two we're going to show off later are a little bit more special, so stick around for that. Uh, but we'll do this first bundle uh, first off. Uh, we're going to start here with Lego Batman. Um, obviously, this is a duplicate. Um, I think we've already shown this before, but um, yeah, as usual with these things, we're going to just wait until we've got enough games together and then do a bundle and try and sell it on. So it's no big deal. Uh, Football Mania. This is a Lego game, it looks like. Well, and I say looks like. It clearly is, given that there's a Lego fucking logo in the corner. Um, I've never, I didn't even know this game existed. EA were involved, which baffles me slightly. Oh, Silicon Dreams as well. That's interesting. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. Um, never heard of this game before in my life. Um, there we are, all complete and everything. Um, yeah, interesting little curiosity, I suppose. Um, there is a bit of damage at the top, kind of, it's weird a little bit at the top, but I'm not too concerned about that. Star Wars Battlefront 2, this is another duplicate, I believe. Um, all complete and everything. Another thing that drew me to this bundle was the fact that everything was in pretty good condition for the most part. Uh, and there was nothing that stood out as being awful or anything. So, uh, yeah, not too bad there. We have Star Wars Super Bombad Racing. Um, they tried to make it very clear that you need a multi-tap for four player. Why did the PS2 do that? That's very strange. Because as far as I'm aware, the Dreamcast had four controller ports, I believe. I'm not sure about that, but... The Nintendo 64 had four controller ports, and the GameCube and the Xbox did, so it's weird they went to two again with the PS2. I never really understood that, um, but here we are. Um, yeah, that's Super Bombard Racing. Never played this like, but um, yeah. It's got a sticker on the back. Hopefully we can take that off, but it should all be fine. Uh, Call of Duty World at War Final Fronts. I am curious about this. Oh, God, Rebellion made it. Oh, dear. Well, that could be Rebellion of very hit and miss. <laughs> um, let's just say that. But uh, I'm a big fan of Call of Duty World at War. I actually like that game a lot. So I'm curious to see what the PS2 version is like. Because um, I've never really seen or heard anyone that's played it before. And wasn't really fully aware that it existed until a few weeks ago. But there we are. Um, we'll see what that's like, I suppose. Uh, we have Treasure Planet here. Um don't think I ever saw the movie. This would have been... When did this come out, this game? 2002? So this would have been right around the period where I probably would have seen a Disney movie. Um, I obviously... I grew up in the uh, in the early 2000s for the most... Well, late 90s, early 2000s. So um, what are the Disney movies I grew up with? See, I grew up with like the late 90s ones that are a bit weird. So like um, Hercules, The Emperor's New Groove, uh, Atlantis. I think I saw that in the cinema. Um, I feel like there's another one that I saw in the cinema as well, and I can't remember the name of. But anyway, I grew up around that period, so I think I might have just been slightly... By that point, nine years old, I probably would have lost interest by that point. But, um, I mean, I still maintain that The Emperor's New Groove is a fantastic movie, so, you know, don't at me. But, um, yeah, that's Treasure Planet anyway. Did I, did I look inside? I don't think I did. Or maybe I did, I don't know. Either way, you've seen it twice now, possibly. There you go. Treat for the Treasure Planet fans out there. Sonic Gems Collection. On the GameCube, this is incredibly expensive, if I remember rightly. Um, not so much here. Um, yeah, it's one of these kind of collector things they did. Um, this is not the same as the Sonic Mega Collection, which was basically all the old games in one thing. This was more, let's put the weird Sonic games out there for people to buy. So this has, you know, Sonic CD, um, which... I think it's pretty good, if I remember rightly. Sonic the Fighters. Yes, there was a Sonic fighting game, if you didn't know. Um, Virtual Fighter did not have anything to worry about. Let's just put it that way. And then we've got Sonic R, which was a racing spin-off with uh, hilariously bad pop music, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah. Of course, 
Sonic didn't really have a proper game on the Saturn, and that was one of the issues with the Saturn, and one of the reasons it failed was because they never actually made a Sonic follow-up. Um, really, the only Sonic games on the Saturn were weird spin-offs, um, and we didn't really get anything until Sonic Adventure, really. So, And then it has Game Gear versions of these six games here. Um, can't say I've actually heard of like most of them, but obviously Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is a thing. But yeah, interesting little... Uh, Historical curiosity, I suppose, this set here. It's all complete and everything again in good condition. Um, I don't know if I no noted this earlier, but um, if, if you like Treasure Planet, again, another treat for you. Um, yeah, there's a slight thing on the cover there. I just noticed out of the corner of my eye. But anyway, um, yeah, not too bad. Um, I don't think, like I said, I don't think this is like mega valuable or anything, but it's 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 in that sort of five pound bracket, so not a bad little thing to get. Speaking of the five pound bracket, Sonic Heroes. Um, yeah, this game though. Um, I I hear bad things about it all the time. I only ever really remember playing the demo of this game, and the demo was quite good. So I don't know if it's just one of them things where the first level is good and then it goes downhill. I'm assuming the issue is this lot here, the fucking state of the supporting cast in Sonic games. I don't know why they're so insistent on doing that. Like no one gives a shit about that big fat thing and the robot guy and the crocodile fella, and the fucking anime emo shit Sonic thing, that fucking Shadow, whatever his name is, or the, like, the sexy female Sonic, or whatever the fuck that she's supposed to be. I can't remember her name now. Um, I don't know why they, they insist on doing that. It's just, it's, I've always found it very strange. Anyway, Jack 3, really good to get this. Um... Again, it's in that... I think it's slightly better than the £5 bracket. The Jack and Daxter games have held their value quite well. But yeah, I was, I was glad to get this in good condition. Um, never played Jack 3. I played I played the first one, Jack and Daxter. Played a little bit of Jack 2, but not much. Never played the third one. So I'm quite looking forward to, to checking this out and seeing what it's like. Um, yeah, good stuff. Um, would like Naughty Dog to do another Jack game. Uh, it's been a while. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a bit kind of... I don't know. I, they, they obviously they do make good games, but I have always been more of a fan of like their their platformy stuff personally. Um, I do love the the Last of Us, the first one. Um, but yeah, make another Jack game, lads. Do something a bit different. And then finally, we have something quite special: Mouse Trophy. I have absolutely no idea what this is, or where it came from, or anything. It's it's bizarre. It, what is it even? Um, Okay, the Mouse Trophy Championship. Yeah, but you haven't explained what that actually is. Manage five rodents in your team. Team of what? Four game modes. And then just some random words that don't really mean anything. Uh, what does that even mean? I don't know what you do, basically. I have no idea what this game is or, or anything. Um, the manual is slightly torn, which is a little bit annoying. But other than that, it's in pretty good nick. Uh, I beg your pardon. Right. Um... I've seen an issue here. Uh, genuinely did not know. <laughs> right. I think we're going to have to have a chat with the eBay seller because this is not Mouse Trophy and I'm outraged. Genuinely, the reason, one of the reasons I bought this bundle is that this I knew this game would be quite annoying to source Mouse Trophy here because who the fuck has heard of this game? I never have. But... No, I've, I've got Midnight Club 2 now, apparently, which, you know, in most circumstances, that would be called a lucky break, right? <laughs> you know, oh, great, I've got Mouse Trophy. Oh, it's Midnight Club 2, a good game. But uh, no, I'm not happy about that. I'm going to have a chat with the eBay seller um, and see what we can do about this, um, because I feel like that was false advertised. But anyway, um, I... By the way, the concept of false advertising by saying, oh no, it's not Midnight Club 2, it's Mouse Trophy. I feel like that's the opposite of what false advertising should be. Um, anyway, yeah, that aside, um, I think we did all right, really, um, with, with with the bundle here that I'm trying to bring into frame and failing miserably at. Um, yeah, I think we did okay with this stuff. Um, like I say, 10 games, pretty good price paid, I think. Um, I can't remember what the price was, but I know it was a pretty good price. Um, and some good games and stuff. Not too many dupes either. I mean, in terms of duplicates, we've got Battlefront 2 here, and then we've got Lego Batman. I believe that's it. Um, let me see. No, yeah, we don't have any of those. Um, 
and we don't have mouse trophy either. Um, yeah, so only two duplicates, and they're they're decently like high value ish duplicates, so it should be easy to sell on. So that's always good. Um, but yeah, that was the first uh, part of the video. Um, it was going well, and then and then mouse trophy was was uh, absent without leave. That's that's very sad. Anyway, let's move on to the good stuff. Mouse trophy update. I needed to do one of those uh, news jingle things like da -da 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 -da, <laughs> something like that. Anyway, yes, mouse trophy. There's a mouse on the front cover. Um, yeah, so we've had a word with a seller, and um, in his own words, quote, it was a complete balls up on my part. That is his exact words. Um, and he actually agreed to refund me uh, £10. The order was only for about 15 plus postage. It was about 18.50 in the end. So, I mean, I even messaged him and said, I t I'd, I'll take five, lad. Like, you don't need to refund me 10. That's a lot. But no, bless him. He refunded me 10 quid. So, um, uh, Midnight Trophy, or perhaps, m actually, Mouse Club. That's far better. Yes, Mouse Club 2. Um, we essentially not only got this for free, but also several other games for free. We essentially have now paid a approximately £8.50 for what we for what I showed you just a second ago. So pretty good stuff. Also, I'm doing this update about maybe an hour after I recorded that first part. So within an hour, the guy, bless him, has solved the issue brilliantly. He has also said if he finds... if he Why did I say finds so weirdly? That was, weird. that was strange. Um, anyway... <laughs> Um, I'm really good at this YouTube stuff. Um, yeah, he's also said if he finds the disc for Mouse Trophy, then he'll send it through uh, free of charge, which would be obviously brilliant if he's willing to do that. So, um, yeah, all's well that ends well, really. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because the seller was great. And, uh, yeah, we kind of resolved the issue in a weird sort of way. I mean, we didn't resolve the issue because we've still got Mouse Club 2. But, um, you know... It's a, it's a historical footnote. It's a collector's edition is what it is. I should actually make like a Photoshop copy of the front cover. Make it so the mouse is like riding on top of a car or something. And yeah, anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll think on that one uh, while we look at the next load of games. Okay. Um, we've, we've, we've made a big purchase. Um, <laughs> so um, this is one of the two like rare packages I've been expecting. This one's quite a biggie. Um... I spent £150 on these four games here. You can probably tell what the theme is going to be. Uh, and you can also probably tell this isn't a PS2 game to start, this one. Um, so, three of them are PS2 games, and then there's this one, which is obviously PS3. Um, on eBay prices, I've done okay. I've saved probably 10 to £15-ish, um, given that, you know... I mean, two of these games are in excellent condition. One is very good, just has a very slight flaw, which we'll get to. And then there's this one, which, honestly, if you switch case with this, it'd be absolutely fine. Um, in fact, we'll put the others out of shot so we're not spoiling anything early. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we'll start We'll start with this one, because obviously it's not part of the collection. This is just a game I wanted to play, like myself, and it came in the bundle, so, you know, win-win, really. So we've got Silent Hill Downpour. I've heard very mixed things about this. There's, there's some people that do adamantly stick by this game despite the fact of its flaws. And that's the thing. Everyone who defends this game doesn't say that it doesn't have flaws, because it does. But they all say that they can overlook those flaws and it has something special about it. Most people focus on the technical aspects and the actual gameplay, which by all accounts is lacking. Um, yeah, this was during the period... I think actually this was the last, like... Silent Hill game, pretty much. Um, I don't think we've had anything really substantial since. Um, I can't remember when it came out in terms of... This was... Because what happened with this, this is a classic Konami story, if you know anything about how incompetent they are. They had plans to do what they called the Month of Madness, where they were going to release three Silent Hill games in one month. Now, that's already a terrible idea. Now, if you're going to release three horror games in a month and call it the Month of Madness, what month would you do? I would probably do October. They did March. <laughs> I don't know why. That scary month of March. I don't know. It's the month I was born, so, you know, and I am basically the second coming of Lucifer. But other than that, I don't understand why you would pick March. It makes no sense. Um, and then the best part is, like, I think two of those games end up getting delayed. Um, I think this one got delayed until, like, maybe June or something, and then... Um, 
I think it was the HD collection, if you remember that disaster, that also got delayed. In fact, it's also memorable because the Month of Madness was three mostly panned games that pretty much killed the franchise off. Uh, you got this one, which was, it was by a company called Vatra Games, who were based in the Czech Republic. Quite a small studio, by all accounts, um, who had never really made a game of this scale before, and they didn't really... You know, it did it just didn't quite work out for them, bless them. They ended up getting closed not long after this came out. Um, you had, obviously, the HD collection, which was a complete and utter disaster that everyone hated. Same story. They got, a, like, a mobile studio to do this massive project that fans have been wanting for years. And they they also they were given incomplete source code to work with, so the whole thing was just a catastrophe. And then uh, there was Book of Memories, which was, like, a Diablo-style game, like an action RPG, top-down dungeon crawler thing, which... What that has to do with Silent Hill, I have no idea. So, complete disaster. Uh, that also was a Vita exclusive. You know, that very successful console that everyone bought. So, <laughs> the whole thing was just a complete disaster. And we've not really had any Silent Hill stuff since. But, um, anyway, that's Downpour. I've been really wanting to play that, so I'm interested in that. We have Silent Hill 2 Director's Cut. I already have this, as you've probably, well, maybe remember from the, the first video I did. was showing off what I already had, kind of my starting point. I already had this. It does have a, a slight tear there in the box art. It's not a big deal, but obviously it does, you know, it's not fantastic. Other than that, this is not bad. The manual's okay. The disc is, like, spotless to the point I'm probably going to have that disc and swap it with my own because it's better than the one I've got. And then we're going to sell this on eBay because we'll get 30 quid easy. Maybe 35, but I think because of the tear in the box, I'm probably going to put it up for, like, you know. We'll see what the lowest one is on there at the time. Um, if, if there's one on there that's like lower than 35, we'll probably just go very slightly under it. If there's if there's only ones that are 35 and over on there, we'll probably come in at like 34 or something. We'll, you know, but the point is, we should be able to sell this absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, and I think this this because of the slightly lower price I'll be charging, it should go quickly because it'll be ideal for someone who actually does want to play the game and is not necessarily a big time collector or anything. They just want to play it, you know. So, and like I said, the case itself is absolutely fine, it's immaculate, and the disc is fantastic, obviously I'll be swapping it, but my disc is also not too bad, so it's all, it's all good, really. So yeah, there's that one. The next two are the kind of the, the big deals. Um, we have Silent Hill 4. This probably goes for, I want to say about 40 quid-ish. Um, I don't really like this game, I'll be honest. I, it, the concept is incredible. The idea of a guy stuck in his apartment for the past five days because it's been chained from the inside and he has no idea why why or how that's happened and he's having recurring nightmares about being murdered by ghosts that come out of his fucking wall. Like, that's incredible. And the early parts of this game are incredibly well done. Um, and then you get to actually getting into it and it's kind of like it's okay for the first half but then you start doing e escort quests with like uh, this companion her basically she becomes like a companion that you have to escort everywhere and you're just going back over the areas that you've already done but this time you've got an escort and there's ghosts everywhere who can't be killed with conventional weaponry at all who just constantly drain your health um, and you can't even go back to your apartment anymore to heal up and save because ghosts are in there too, draining your health. So it just becomes a massive slog, and I don't know what the deal was with that. But, um, but you know, it's good to have the game for the collection. <laughs> uh, it's in good condition too, decent manual. The disc is the disc on all these, they honestly look like they've been resurfaced. They're, they're immaculate, so that's really good too. And the case is pretty good, as you can see. So, yeah, happy with that. Good condition. Uh, and then finally, this is the big one. Silent Hill Origins. Uh, this game goes for about 70 quid. You're not going to get it for less than that unless you're very lucky or unless there's a fault with it or something. So I was happy to get this as part of it for sure. Um, so yeah, really good condition too. Good manual, good disc. So happy days. Um, I have played this actually. Um, it's it's better than people say it is. Um, you know, it was the the... the Really, the biggest issue with this game is the fact it was a PSP game originally. I'm not sure if it came out on the PS2 at the same time or if it was ported. I can't remember which way around they did it. But either way, the PSP game was clearly the base they used to port it because it has basically the same graphics. Obviously, I mean, the PSP was quite powerful, surprisingly so, to the point where it was essentially a portable PS2. But still, um, even then, you can tell the textures were probably designed for a smaller screen and stuff like that. But if you can overlook that, I mean, this is a fully-fledged Silent Hill experience on a handheld. 
obviously this version isn't handheld, but um, so from that aspect, it's quite technically impressive, um, and it's pretty good, honestly. It's got some jankiness to it for sure, but it's a decent survival horror experience, and it, it got way more stick than it probably deserved. Um, this was obviously it was kind of the start of the downfall of the series, really, because yeah, I mean, you went from this, this absolute classic unbelievable game and then the third game which is almost as good honestly to then this which was a big drop off in quality and then obviously team spilent uh, team spilent what team silent was disbanded it was a i don't know what happened there um and then they the, the, the they that's when konami started outsourcing it so climax studios got hold of this one uh, as you can see up there who i think i don't know where they're from exactly but i want to say they're a european studio but i'm not Actually, I think they're a British studio now, I think about it, but I can't remember exactly. And then after that, obviously, you had Homecoming, which was um, done by an American studio, which was not a good game at all. And then from there, you know, you had Vatra doing Downpour, and you had um, the Book of Memories guys, I think, were, were Western developers as well. Western developers just never quite got what Silent Hill was supposed to be. Um, but I think this was probably the best attempt by a Western studio. I will say that. Um, well... Having not played Downpour yet, that could change. But, you know, for now, I would say this is probably the best of the post Silent Hill 4 games. I also haven't played Shattered Memories either. I will say that too. Um, but I haven't heard good things about that. So I don't think that would sway my opinion particularly. But anyway, um, yeah, we've, we've, we've got some grails, as they call them. Um, so big time. So we've got Silent Hill 4, Origins. Obviously, two will be resold. And then Downpour is nice to get to. Not part of the collection, but I wanted to play it anyway, so happy days. But yeah, um, happy about that. Um, we've got one more package coming in. It's This package, I've ordered it like a week ago, and it's still not arrived, so I need to go onto the eBay seller, I think, and be like, what the hell are you playing at? Um, so, yeah, we'll see about that one. That's another rare-ish one. I, I haven't... Put it this way, I didn't spend nearly as much as I did on these. I spent 50 quid on the other bundle, which has also got three games in it. But I think for 50 quid, I actually did really well on the other one. Whereas with this, I mostly paid... I paid slightly under eBay value. But the fact that this was this was on Facebook Marketplace, so the benefit I had there was that I, I could still pay by PayPal and get protection that way. But also, I could see the condition of the games. Whereas, you know, I could have... For example, CEX, I could have spent maybe slightly more and got these games, but the condition is a crapshoot. You don't see what it looks like before you get it. So with Facebook Marketplace, I had the benefit of seeing what it all, what condition it was all in, like eBay, um, but also it was a bit better in that it was slightly cheaper. So it was best of both worlds, really. So I, I took the punt on it. But um, yeah, and like I say, we'll get at least 30 quid back from this. So good stuff. Anyway, um, I'll stop rabbiting on about these. Um, we'll be back when we have the final package. So, um, you know, for me, it'll be bloody days probably. For you guys, it'll be a second because technology is amazing, isn't it? Okay, we have the final um, lot of games as promised. Um, these are pretty good ones. Um, spent 50 quid on these three, as I think I mentioned when I recorded the last bit. Um, and I think I got a pretty good deal overall. Um, as you'll hopefully soon see. Um, so yeah, first game as you can see, Atelia Iris 2, is that how you pronounce that? Atelia? Atelia? No idea. Um, this is some sort of RPG series that's been going on for approximately 65 million years. Um, I looked on the Wikipedia page for the series because I was just curious. Oh my god, there's a lot of games in this series. I actually lost track of what was even happening with it. It was so weird. Um, yeah, it's all complete and everything. It's in really good condition as well. Um, also has the bonus disc, which is like a soundtrack CD, which is pretty cool, little extra. Um, yeah, so I was happy to pick this up. It's it's absolutely not my kind of thing at all, but um, for the collection, it's it's pretty good to get. So, does that say no? Okay, I read the memory card minimum there of three hundred and eighty kilobytes, and I read that as three thousand eight hundred, and I was baffled for a second. But no, um, yeah, I was happy to pick that up anyway. It's um, as I say, really good condition and stuff. We have another game that's absolutely not for me, but never mind. Dot Hack Infection Part One. Um, there's four games I think in this series that came out in Power Regions, and I think NTSC as well, maybe. But there's actually seven overall, so it's quite a long-running franchise, this one. Um, I believe it's related to an anime or s of something of that nature. I mean, it does say anime DVD included, but that could just be maybe exclusively for the game. I can't remember. 
Uh, I don't know. Simulated MMORPG. That probably means it's full of really bad fetch quests, but never mind. Um, yeah, so I have no idea if uh, like this game's any good or not. I just know it's been going on for quite a while. Uh, I don't know if they still make these games, but they did for a while there on the PS2. Um, it's all complete and has the bonus disc as well, as you can see. Uh, it's in good condition again. The only problem really is the horrible sticker residue at the bottom. So I'm probably just going to swap this um, with a different case. Um, I've got a load of games that I'm sending off to CEX to trade in. Um, just like duplicates that I just need to get rid of. So I'll probably just swap swap this case with one of those like good cases. Because um, the box art and everything else is in really good condition. So it's just literally that bit. Um, obviously the sticker wouldn't come across then, that's the only problem, um, but I don't think that's a massive deal. But yeah, I was happy to pick this up anyway, like I say, it's not really my thing, but these games are quite expensive, so it was good to get one of those out of the way. And finally, Clock Tower 3. Um, <clears throat> this has a similar issue with the box, in that there is a bit of sticker residue, but this is much less of a big deal, there's a lot less of it, so I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. But yeah, this game... Uh, another one that goes for a fair amount of money. It's not as expensive as like Haunting Ground, which was like the spin-off to this, but it's getting up there. Um, and this is all complete and everything. There is a sticker on the manual. I'm assuming that will just come off um, because most of them do, so it should be fine. Um, I just, whenever I see this game, I just think about um, there's a a friend of mine who played this game and got to the final boss, and the final boss, after many many attempts kind of cheaply killed him and um he literally screamed with rage and was not happy about the whole thing so uh yeah unfortunate so i've probably really upset him now so i do apologize but um you know what can you do but yeah i've actually wanted to play this for ages um i mean it's a it's a survival horror game by capcom right so i'm i'm already on board um not heard the best of things you know mostly most of the complaints seem to be around the combat um but, and also, I think it's quite short as well, if I remember rightly, which, you know, Capcom Survivor Horror Game, of course it's short. They're all short. Um, but so, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this one out anyway, um, and it was good to get a copy of it. So I think I did really well overall. To get these three for 50 quid, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, pretty good deal. Um, and I think we'll end the video there, because, we're. I mean, I don't know how long it is exactly, probably like 25, 26 minutes, which, yeah, it's a bit long, so we're going to end it there, I think. But yeah, I think we did quite well this time. Uh, we we spent a lot more money than usual. It wasn't your standard thing of, you know, 10 games for £15 or whatever. This was, you know, 3 for 50 and then obviously 4 for 150 as we saw earlier. So uh, we spent some wedge, um, but we got some big hitters out of the way, some uh, grails, if you like. Um, so that's good to get those out of the way. There's obviously a lot more to go. There's the other dot .hack games for a start. If there's any more games in this series on the console, I imagine they're quite a lot. Haunting Ground, obviously, the spin-off of this is more expensive. You're looking at maybe the upwards of probably £60, £70 pounds for that. Um, and then obviously there's the big hitters, your Kuons, your Rule of Rose, uh, that one Garfield game that there's like 10 copies in existence in the in, in power regions. It's insane. Um you know, all that stuff, but, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But it was good to get these out of the way for a decent price, so I was happy to pay it. Um, and actually, it was up for 55 or best offer, so I offered 50 So I even got a slight discount on that. So, yeah, good stuff. Anyway, um, that's me done, I think. Um, so, yeah, we'll be back with some other pickups soon. Um, no idea when that will be. There's no, I've not got anything on the way at the moment. Um and we haven't really, I've, I've took a couple of days off from checking eBay and stuff because it just, you know, it, there's only so many times you can check eBay and see some absolute clown trying to sell copies of like FIFA 07 for five quid that you just roll your eyes. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have a look again at some point soon and uh, we'll see what's out there. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers.